gonna do short videos for the month of September. Sort of thought that I'd show you bit by bit the process of turning this previously box room slash music studio slash video studio slash storage space for about six million kinds of crafts and nine million instruments into a stylish and functional YouTube studio which is coming along very nicely it's a little bit slower and more boring than I thought it was going to be because whilst I had planned you know two coats of paint in a day and on the walls that worked out pretty fine most of the time apart from the flooding incident we had but when it came to painting the dresser the treatment I was putting on it requires 48 hours uh, to dry between coats so you can imagine that slowed me down considerably so I had taken the opportunity to spend the time in between coats of paint just scripting videos and getting ready for ditchoing you might see that I put a little bit of merchandise out now I know you know it's a bit early to be getting excited and you don't really know what ditchoing is yet and to be honest I'm not too sure myself but we're getting there and I know it's going to be spooky and I know it's going to be fun mainly spooky though like really spooky I freaked myself out once or twice researching some of the videos but anyway basically my scripting and DIY content was about as interesting as watching paint dry because that's literally what it is and so I hadn't planned on doing anything longer or more in depth for you I certainly don't have the time to be researching and recording and editing the weekly videos but I did come across a hidden gem from many many moons ago just a couple of weeks ago and I don't know if it's you know the smell of fresh paint in here I don't know if it's the white walls I don't know if it's my preppy homage to Sheriff from the Clueless that's happening but when I got this into my hands I thought I know who might like to see this it is basically my art portfolio from both secondary school which is like high school and then the art college that I went to after that so it's a collection of my work from the ages of maybe 15 to 19. I had thought that this was lost forever because I have moved house a lot over the years and this had been put in storage with my friend Teresa who you heard me mention at the start of the year unfortunately she passed away and recently amongst all of her stuff down behind a large and heavy piece of furniture my art portfolio was resurrected so if you'd like to take a little stroll back through memory lane with me now for the next few minutes I think we're going to take a little look inside. <gasps> this way around. Oh, you don't want your wits about you for that. I could be doing with a cup of tea. But look, it, we're here now. God, I remember the worry of even having to get one of these. There's only a limited amount of them in the local art supply shop, so you know, it's a uh, dog eat dog. You can see my. Uh, very tasteful textiles piece here, which was uh, basically a lot of stuff stuck onto card with glue and then sewed together with a sewing machine. I don't know. I wasn't particularly good at textiles. My textiles teacher agreed with me. And these were storyboards that I did for a stop motion animation film that I made so you see it's kind of introducing the main character and showing you kind of scene by scene what's going on edgy it was actually a really good art course it was only one year long it was meant to prepare you for going on to a degree I never did go on to the degree because a few of our teachers went out of their way to explain to us that there was basically no chance of you making 
a full-time living as an artist. And when I was 19 years of age, I was like, what? How am I going to afford shoes? But I really, really, really like the stop motion animation. It involved me shutting myself into, you know, the photography dark room. I basically booked that for the better part of five days, Monday to Friday, nine to five, in there by myself, moving these clay figurines, just, you know, tiny minute details, like making the eye blink would take like, what, 16, 24 frames to do it right? And I loved it. That sort of obsessive attention to detail and obviously, you know, shutting myself into the dark room for five days and getting graded on the results, that's, that's my kind of challenge. At the end of those five days, I had, I think it was 43 seconds of footage in my film. It was about 43 seconds long. That is about standard for the one woman show kind of situation that I had going on. I always meant to get back to stop motion animation, but I haven't quite made it there yet. I think if I was to do that, I would probably withdraw completely from the real world and become one of these 103 year old hermit ladies who lives at the edge of the town and guilts people into feeding her so she can just sit there playing with clay all day. This was just, you know, messing around with different techniques. I think it was probably ink drawn with a twig or something weird like that because that's what art college is really all about. Here you can see I drew some lovely celery and I was fond of an owl still life. I used to set up scenes in my room and just practice. You know, I really liked the sort of uh, the gathers in fabric and the different sheens and textures that you would get depending on the light. And then a very unflattering picture of my sister. You've got some uh, nice ink drawing there. That one's, it's not great, but it's not terrible. And another thing we had to do was self-portraits in the style of an artist. Now, to be honest, I don't think even at the time that was a very good likeness. It just wasn't. I don't know if I was ever really that good at drawing myself. But it was meant to be done in the style of Van Gogh. Or Van Gogh, I don't actually know how you're meant to pronounce that. Trying to imitate the colours and techniques of Van Gogh, the, the thick brush strokes, but I mean, I find it very hard to be so wasteful with paint. And another big love of mine was to draw flowers. Particularly in chalk because, you know, you can just get such a vibrant effect with chalk. I think that was gouache and that was chalk. Ah uh, yeah, you see, there was my take on Van Gogh. You had to copy one of the artist's self-portraits sort of to get into their head, you know. I mean, personally, I'm not 100% convinced that getting into the mind of my idol, one of my idols, Vincent van Gogh, was the best idea for a 15 or 16 year old Tara. You know, I was a bit too keen to try absinthe and stuff when I got on a little bit. But more about my francophilia as we go along, it is noticeably evident in my early artistic work. Yes, more chalky flowers. I've always been sort of very into graphic kind of use of colour. Would have been a big drive of mine, particularly, you know, when contrasted with a real dark kind of background. Ah, and this piece de resistance. This was the piece that I missed the most when I thought I had lost my portfolio. This was a piece I had just done at home myself for pleasure one day when I was bored I took apart a computer mouse and I got out my lovely big A1 notepad 
and decided that I was going to blow it up. We were going to go big style with the computer mouse. It wasn't actually that brightly coloured in reality, it was just a regular old computer mouse. But in school, in secondary school, we had been taught that you should never use black. Now, I happen to disagree, but I also kind of agree a little bit in that black shouldn't be your first go-to for, you know, shading or things like that. The thing to do is to use some black, yes, but look for the color in that black. You know, if you let your eyes focus on something that you think is black, depending on the way the light is shining on it, depending on the color of the room that you're in, depending on all of these kinds of things, after a while, maybe a long while, you'll be able to start making out hues of different colors in it, which does get a little bit annoying at times when somebody asks you what color something is. You could spend all day thinking about that, trying to give them the most accurate answer that you possibly can. Those memes about, are these sneakers green or gray? They drive me insane. Don't send those to me, okay? Or there will be no more videos. I'm not even lying. So yeah, when I sat down and looked at it, this color palette just sort of uh, revealed itself to me, you know? I'm not gonna lie, I'd be of half a mind to frame that. You know, which is more than I can say for my really dodgy attempt at drawing a hand there. It was my hand holding a ladle, a shiny ladle, and all the things that were reflected in the ladle as I looked into it, you know, because I was a really edgy teenager and I thought this was cool. What I didn't realize is that hands are hard, man, okay? Don't judge me by my knuckles. Look at my nice shiny kettle instead. Yes, yes. Ha ha. And more ladles. Okay, Tara. Steady on with the ladles. Some uh, upside down tulips there. Now I'm not gonna pull out all the little things. I think most of the stuff I'm proudest of is there. Oh yeah, look at them. This, this is the follow up hit then. After doing the mouse, I decided to do another, but smaller. So this little, what, a three-sized one was the inside of my disc man when it broke and I took it apart. But yeah, I like the first one better. The original is always the best. And we are starting to get real crazy with it now, okay? You had to make a puppet when I was in secondary school, I think for the... Junior cert and this was the puppet that my mummy helped me to make. You know, that was her hair And um, Yeah, showing off her dress And her face was quite something. I took inspiration for this piece from Toulouse Lautrec's paintings of the Moulin Rouge It was also a piece for my junior cert project like Toulouse-Lautrec's paintings, my puppet is quite animated and exaggerated. Well, that tells you everything you need to know, doesn't it? Except, look at that corset. I mean, we don't know if we were historically accurate. We didn't even really have that many reference photos to go off, but you know what? That didn't stop us. We went for it. And it was, it was weird little almost X-rated projects like this that really brought me and my mother together. Shout out to Mommy. Mommy is always game for an impromptu craft project. Especially if there's costumes involved. That's obviously where I get it from. But yeah, that was the whole point of the puppet. You had to make the head out of clay, you know, and I used wool or yarn for her hair and we made little ringlets in it. Like when I think about it now, I worked on it for months. I was so proud of it. It has probably gone into the bin since. Because, you know, I was moving house, mum was moving house, everyone was moving house and there is nowhere to keep stuff like this, unfortunately. But yeah, she was quite something. The stuff of nightmares, some might say. But we're gonna have a real moment now, okay? I'm gonna tell you how far this, this obsession with sort of late 19th century Paris 
and you know post-impressionism and the Moulin Rouge. I'm gonna tell you how deep that actually went okay I actually sent a letter to the Moulin Rouge when I was maybe 15, 16 years of age asking them how could I become a can-can dancer because you know in the movies and stuff it just seemed like all these really talented dancing vagrants would just show up there you know and uh, as they started to make more money from being dancers at the Moulin Rouge they could buy wilder and wilder outfits and you know they became these icons like La Goulou now granted she was the clown so I didn't really want to be her but you know I mean I was young and impressionable and you had Nicole Kidman making it look good so in fairness to the Moulin Rouge they wrote back to me you know this was in the days just before email they had a website but you know I, I, I don't even know if there was an email address on it at the time so I sent them a letter by post and they wrote back by post and I found the letter last year and they they were very polite in um, crushing my dreams of being a can-can dancer in the late 19th century. You know, they, they thanked me for writing to them and they were very encouraging but the problem was even though I was built like a rake as a teenager, you know, I was, I was kind of tall and skinny, I wasn't tall enough or skinny enough to be a can-can dancer at the time and I also would have needed a degree in jazz or tap dancing. Sorry, jazz and slash or tap dancing, you know, which I didn't have and I didn't really know how to get. I still don't know where you would get a degree in jazz or tap in Ireland. But anyway, the notion eventually passed and it's probably just as well, you know, all that high kicking and yelping and oh god and there's a lot more boobies i think on display in the moulin rouge now than there were in the the movie reconstructions moulin rouge and then later baz luhrmann's moulin rouge and by the way if you haven't seen the original moulin rouge film like it's absolutely nothing like baz luhrmann's two completely different films the original was centered on the life of the artist Toulouse Lautrec who created all those kinds of graphic posters for the Moulin Rouge, those really iconic images of the characters that hung out there. A lot of those were actually created by Toulouse Lautrec using lithography. Back when that was still a really big deal, he was like superstar poster maker. So I would highly recommend if you can get your hands on a copy of that, do it. Yeah, and then we had to do some clay work you know this was I don't know if we all did naked ladies or if I just really like to do naked ladies and semi naked ladies you know fine art another reason I thought it would be good to show you some of this kind of stuff is that if you yourself are a budding artist you know that maybe never got the opportunity to go to art college this is the kind of body of work that would get you accepted into an art college so like a lot of different media being explored and just showing what you can do different techniques different materials and even if you're not looking to get into an art college even if you just want to maybe explore art and your creative tendencies a little bit more as a hobby or for fun or to relax whatever it is you know these are pretty good places to start so you want to do some life drawing you know try and get your hands on some clay if you can and you know it's important just to remember that if you're into making 2d work that you don't always just have to stick with that sometimes working in 3d can actually really help with your 2d stuff and vice versa more fucking celery i don't i'm sorry folks i don't know what to do about all the celery that's happening i think we had been told not to do peppers i think a lot of people had done peppers in the years just before i went to art college and they said don't do peppers and i was like I know, I know. And it became a celery extravaganza. I don't know what to tell you, I'm sorry. Some nice artsy photography in the black room. 
It's a must for all art students to do something really weird in the dark room at least once during the year. Get your minds out of the gutter, okay? Nobody does that in dark rooms. There are chemicals in there and expensive equipment. And then my hilarious attempts to go flapper. Look at that, wearing my mommy's anorak and pretending it was a fur coat. Oh, be Jesus. Again, myself and mommy made the whole costume. That's quite a good one there, you know. The idea of this, I wasn't just, you know, dressing up and posing around the place. Look at that, that's really, but look at that dodgy, dodgy wig. Dodgy, dodgy, dodginess. So, so dodgy. The idea was to recreate film stills that never actually existed. So the artist that I had been given to explore was Cindy Sherman and if you've never heard of her, check her out, just google some of her work. Sometimes she recreated like real film stills from actual B-movies from old films, but most of the time she was just recreating scenes that look like they could have been in old movies, if you get me. So that was kind of what I set out to do. Rather mixed bag of success there, but I guess I wasn't doing so bad until I look at this. Right, again, I don't actually know what's going on here. I decided it would be kind of edgy to um, put on like a suit, even though I didn't own a suit, and uh, take some artsy pictures in a church. What was I going for? I have absolutely no idea. Yeah, poor Tara. So confused. Oh, I remember this. This was interesting stuff. You know, you'd have to stand up on top of the uh, the table in the classroom and you'd be handed the handle of a broomstick with a paintbrush attached to the top of it and you'd have to draw the thing. I think that's what I was doing here. I don't know, that looks a bit tidy to be done from six foot above the page. I'm not too sure. And then, I don't know, printing stuff with paint onto tissue paper and stuff and stuff. Drawing crumpled up balls of paper. This is what they have you do in an art school, okay? They just come in with a big ball of like milk cartons, empty milk cartons, all tied together using a length of baling twine and be like, here, draw that. You know, good for getting out of your mind. You don't have to try and make it look good, you just have to try and recreate what's in front of you. Yeah, and then this was obviously me trying out a little bit more of the technical drawing. It was the inside of a little wind-up music box that I had. Finding the colour in a black ceramic incense holder. Why wouldn't you? Doing a line drawing of a black ceramic incense holder. And a hose. Oh yeah. And then we had life drawing to do too. I was actually very privileged in that I got brought to life drawing classes by my secondary school art teacher with an actual real life naked lady modeling for them, which was fantastic. Oh, you can really see like working out the frame of where the body is and Trying to do it quickly, you know, if you can recreate the sort of the stance of the way the person is standing or lying in a short period of time, then filling it out and, you know, making it look very professional is a lot easier by comparison. To just trying to make it all look really good in one go. Okay, she looks a bit scary there, don't judge that lady, that very excellent life model on my ability or lack thereof. It's making me more than a little bit nostalgic for art college, but you know, I think it all worked out okay for me in the end. I took all those techniques that I learned and you know, it's where I learned how to use Photoshop, which is how I got on to 
then later doing video editing software and all of that so it all led to where I am right now and I wouldn't take back any of it and when you think as well that oh I haven't got enough money to get this that and the other well the life of an art student teaches you that you can do quite a lot with very very little which I think has been invaluable to me over the years I mean look at this okay this was <laughs> you can't see what that is probably but that is a uh butterflies that I made from um, you know balloon modeling balloons and I strung them up in the trees of the local park for a theme that I believe was tranquility okay did it make sense not really was it a visually interesting piece not really I mean you know from a distance maybe you could posterize it and make some really weird wallpaper out of it but uh that'll be that'll be a feature wall kind of job you know you wouldn't you wouldn't plaster your whole room with that i don't think look what like what what was i doing i don't know i was having fun is what i was doing art college rules even just pretending you're in art college rules you do end up making a lot of stuff out of rubbish. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little stroll down memory lane with me today. Uh, it's only just a little impromptu thing that I wanted to put together. Just to check in and say hi and gonna put this portfolio away again for the foreseeable future. But I'm gonna see you very soon. Birthday Q&A coming out on the 30th of September. Drop your comments below. And I'll see you then. Slán agus banat, goodbye and good luck to you.